Good afternoon everyone and welcome to day 19. Can you believe it's day 19 already? This month has absolutely flown by. I remember it was just yesterday that was opening door number four. So today is number 19 and we've got an incredible, incredible finding. So with much further ado, we will just have a look if you're joining me at home. So as I mentioned on my first day, it's always a good sign when you open your little bag and you see there's an anti-tarnish tag in so straight away you know there's going to be something special inside and today for day 19 we have the most beautiful i call them rabbit ears i think that's probably not the, the technical term but we have the most exquisite absolutely exquisite bale and this is for a half drilled pearl or a half drilled gemstone if I turn it over so you've got your double bale and then you've also got your gemstone pin all sterling silver and the attention to detail is beautiful we've even got the turning of the screw around the peg bale there so even if you've got a better bead or a pearl with a tiny little hole in you can actually screw your peg bale into position if you want to so I decided with this little bale it's amazing that the imagination that guest designers have had throughout December because we get given these little findings and we're told to make anything we like as long as it incorporates the piece of jewellery or finding or whatever you have in your advent calendar. So I've done lots of different things this month so far and I've decided for today that we're going to visit one of my most favourite techniques, the kiss cross, but we're going to go down, we're going to downsize and we're going down to the micro kiss cross. So what I've used is the most incredible pearl as you can see we've got it on this necklace here this is the full piece of jewelry and you can just see the bail above the pearl so I'm going to show you first of all how I if I was at home would attach the bail to the pearl and then I'm going to talk you through the kiss cross the micro kiss cross from start to finish and then how we put the piece of jewelry together so in front of me is everything you're going to need so I've been incredibly incredibly naughty and those of you who have just watched the show I made a bit of a confession right at the beginning. So as it is Christmas, and I don't get to use this product anymore on the show, I thought, in for a penny. So I'm going to show you my Kiss Cross today using Swarovski Crystal, as it, as it, is, as it is Christmas. So these are four millimeter bicones. And as you know, since Swarovski no longer make their components, Jewelry Maker have bought a huge range of four millimeter bicones, glass or gemstone to the show. So you've probably all got a variation of the four millimeter bicone in your stash. But as I said, as I thought, as it's Christmas and I don't get to use them anymore, I'm going to use them in the demo today. But as I said, any four millimeter bicone you have in your stash. Because we are micro kiss crossing, you need to change your size of your seed beads. Normally for your conventional cross, your kiss cross, you use an ato as your kiss, so where your, your threads cross. And for the main netting, you use an 11o. So because we're micro kiss crossing, we're going down. So we, where the kiss is, where, the, where the, the crosses meet in the center, we're using an 11o. And then the netting, you can see here with the silver bead, are your 15o's. So we are going quite intricate, but it's exactly the same technique. So for those of you who know the kiss cross, you'll know how to start and how we get going but if you if you're not new to it i'm throwing you right in at the deep end with the tiniest beads possible if you find that too tricky just upsize to your 80 and your 110 and, and then start again the last thing i want to do is put you off kiss crossing because it's one of the most beautiful techniques and and uh, i think it's a it's a bit of a staple in the jewelry maker field at the moment so I, I i want everybody to know how to make the kiss cross it's just incredible so there are your seed beads the 11 o's and your 15 o's We've covered the Swarovski bicones, they're your four millimeter. Use a sharp pair of scissors to cut your thread. And the thread that I'm using today is a white six pound fireline. You can use fireline or wildfire, whichever you prefer. I always go for, for fireline, because I, I tend to find in some certain brands, if you sometimes pierce through the thread with your needle and with the fire line, that never happens. So I'm going to, for the demo today, the last thing I want to do is get a knot in my thread live on air. So I'm going to use the fire line. Needle of choice I'm going to use today are the tulip needles. These are size 11. Uh, I'm a massive fan of the tulip needles and I use these every day when I'm on the show. That's the pearl that I'm going to show you how to put onto your bell. I'll show you that more closely in a second. 
And then findings, if you're going to make your earrings, you'll need obviously your post, your, your head pins and your shepherd's hooks. If you're going to make a necklace or a bracelet, you need a, a clasp of some choice. And as I mentioned on the show, if you were listening, a little tip as far as popping your bail onto your pearl or your, or your stone of choice. And I was, I, um, I, was, I was very mysterious and I said, you would need a little grip seal bag that you have in your findings packs and a cocktail stick, okay? Now all will be revealed. So I think what we'll do is as we need the glue to dry, we'll prepare our pearl first of all, we'll pop that to one side and then we'll get on with a crisscross and then I'll show you how we put everything together. So, as many of you know who follow me on the show, patience is not my greatest virtue. So anything for a quick fix. And as you can imagine, we make hundreds and hundreds of pieces of jewellery every month, so time is of the essence. If you are at home watching this, either now live or on catch-up, I definitely recommend using the Hypo cement. Now that's the glue, the jewellery making specific glue that comes in the tube with a very fine nozzle for getting to, into all your nooks and crannies. Now, I have that at home. I haven't got the time to wait. I need, I need to fast pace moving on my jewellery. So I use, and many of you know, the glue that's super. I absolutely love this product. It's got me out of lots of messes in the past and I use this for everything purely because it bonds in seconds, okay? So I can glue my attachment to my pearl or my gemstone, put it to one side and I know within a minute I'm ready to start with the next piece of the jewellery. So you ask, you're probably wondering why I've got a little grip seal bag and cocktail stick. So this is how I, whenever I'm doing a bale peg, this is how I do it. So if I'm, because I'm not using the very fine nozzle that you get with your epoxy resin, your, your hypo cement, what I do, and I find that even with the fine nozzle that you get on this glue, it still comes out very, very quickly. So what I do using the grip seal bag is I just put a couple of drops on the bag. That's all you need, just a couple of drops. I won't use that again. And then using a cocktail stick, this is the pearl I've used. This is an amazing nucleated top drilled pearl. You can just see the drill hole on the top there. And all I do is I just twiddle the cocktail stick in the glue and then just adhere it around the drill hole on the top of the pearl. Okay, and then twizzle, place on top there. And then what I do then is I repeat that with my bale peg. So I hold the bale peg and all I do is I just twizzle around the peg with the glue, place that inside. So I always put glue on the pearl and the bale peg, whichever I'm, I'm doing. I always say you get double the whammy. Okay, so that's now in there setting. And then what I do to keep that in position is if you take one of your, your copper wire spools, you'll notice that there's a little center hole through the middle there. So what I do is while that is setting, I just place that in that little hole and then I put that to one side and that's keeping it upright. All the glue it's doing work in its magic and I can put that to one side. So that's why I needed the little grip seal bag and the cocktail stick. So all you do then is just fold that up and dispose of as you will. Okay, so that's, that's all you need for for doing your peg bale. So let's put that to one side and we'll start with the beading. So as I said, I'm going to be using Swarovski as my bead of choice. So I'll just fill some of those out and see them in there. Most elegant. No, it's such a shame that um, that Swarovski decided to not make loose stones anymore, but um, but we've we've been able to get some work with some amazing manufacturers getting our glass beads in, and we still do fire polished and check glass and that sort of thing. So, so Swarovski's loss. So 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 these are your four millimeters, and I said if if you find that four millimeter bicones with your micro crisscross is too small. I mentioned that you jump up a size with your seed bees, just jump up a size with your bicone as well. So go from a four millimeter up to a six millimeter. So first of all, we're going to cut a bit of our thread off. What I tend to do, you probably notice that as I'm pulling my thread, I keep the little cover on and that just stops your, your thread from going all over the floor. Just gonna cut the thread. And then as I said, use a, a 11 -0 needle going to thread that. There we go, marvellous. Okay, so we threaded our needle. And what I love about the tulip needle, you probably notice how quickly I threaded that, was because the eye 
has actually been dipped in 24 karat gold. And that makes it so ease of use with the eye. It's very smooth. It's got a really nice larger eye to it as well. But because it's infilled with the gold, it's a very smooth aperture to get your thread in and out. It's lovely. And then we'll pop out some of our beads. So as I said, we need two sizes. You can do it in the same size, but I definitely recommend that you have different colours, purely because you, it's a lot of counting to do in Kiss Cross, and you may get them, if you're not completely au fait with your central bead of the netting, you may miss a bead and it, it just becomes too complicated. Okay, so we're going to start. Now, you can do as many beads as you like to make your tubing section. I'll just bring one of the earrings across and lay it down next to me just so you can see what we're doing, okay? So uh, you can see here that I've got, if we look down, you can see that I use three bicones to, to, to do your, your tubing with. You can use four, you can use five, but you must realize that the more beads you add, there's a hole going down through the center of your tubing. And if you get, if you'd use too many beads on the outside, that hole will get bigger and it will be able to, it becomes quite squidgy. And I found out that if you, if you only use three, that makes a really nice, tight, structured tube. So you can actually use it as a, as a, as a, a feature. You can use them as gurus and markers in your malas if you wanted to. You can do a complete over the head 360. But for me, the, the three beads is just the right amount and you get that really nice tube shape. So the way we start, so we're going to use an 11 and a bicone to start. So I'm going, because I've noticed there's lots of greens in this little pile, I'm going to go down the green route. So we're going to pick up one 11 one bicone, one 11 one bicone, one 11 and one bicone. Okay, now this is the only time that you're going to add seed beads and your bicone in the same round. From now on, it's going to be alternating, okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to slide that down and we're going to tie a single knot followed by a double knot. So once, twice. And try if you can just to complement your beading with the thread colour you're using. So if I tend to use the white if I'm using a see-through bead like the bicones here or forest green which is a, which is my probably my most favorite as many of the viewers know but for this one I'm going to I'm going to use the white so as I've just mentioned that's the only time throughout the whole design that we're going to use seed beads and bicones at the same time so what we're going to do now is we're going to start our netting so I'm going to sew away from the knot I'm going to sew through the bicone and I'm going to exit through the 11 -0. Okay, so if I lay that down flat, you can see that I've sewn away from the knot through the 11 -0, through the bicone, through the 11 -0. So I'm now exiting and I'm ready to start my netting. So the netting will consist of what's called an arc. And an arc is a series of beads that cover the perimeter of the exposed area of your bicone. So we're going to get a little surround. And depending on the size of the bicone or the gemstone you use determines the number of beads you use in your arc. Now for this particular four millimeter bicone, the combination is three fifteens, one eleven, and three fifteens. And that is going to be the same combination from the start to the finish of your piece of jewelry, whether it's an earring to a full 360 degree over the head necklace always going to be that combination three one three so we're going to go round the bicone into the next 11 0 and we're just going to pull that and you can see now if i lay that down you get this perfect little surround of seed beads around that bicone then we're going to do exactly the same with the next so we're exiting the 11 we're going to pick up the same combination so one two three fifteens one eleven three fifteens we're going to go round the bicone into the next eleven o i'm going to pull that through so that's our next little surround and then we're going to do the same with the remainder so three fifteens one 
11 and then three 15s. Okay, so we're going to go round the last bicone into that next 11 O. Let's take the needle through. So I'm going to lay that down flat and you can see now that we've got perfectly surrounding the three bicones. So once we get to this stage, we've got to do what's called a step up. So you can see at the moment I'm exiting through that middle of that group of three. If you imagine the three 11s in a row, I'm exiting through the middle. Now what I want to do is I need to step up so I'm at the outer edge, I'm at that corner there. So all we're going to do is we're going to continue in the direction that that thread needle is going. So I'm going to sew through the three 15s and exit through that gold 11O at the corner. So then when I pull that thread through, and again I'm going to lay it down flat, you can see I'm now exiting through the corner. I don't think you can have corners in a triangle, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll call it a corner. So we're going to have an expert, we're coming out of that corner. Now do you remember a couple of minutes ago I said that you always add seed bead in a row, then your, your gemstone or your bicone, and then you alternate. So we've just had our seed bead round, so now we know that it's back to bicones. So we'll stay with the green. As I said, I've, we've got quite a few of those in my little stash here. I must say, it's an absolute joy using these after all these years. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our next row of bicones. So can you see, well, at the moment, we've got six 11 O's. We've got one, two, three at the three outer points and then we've got three middle 11 O's. We're going to ignore those middle B's, they've done their bit now. We're just concentrating on these three outer corners. So I'm going to pick up a bicone. I'm going to jump the whole space. So I'm going to go from this corner nearest to me all the way over to the next outer corner. And I'm going to pull, and then I'm going to do the next. So jumping corner to corner. And then I'm going to jump from corner to corner, corner to corner. Okay, pull that through and then I just give it a little tug and you can now see that already that netting you've got at the moment is a zigzag because we've only done two rows has already started to form. So what we're going to do now, now we've just added our bicone so we now know it's back to seed beads again. So exactly the same combination. So one, two, one, two, three fifteens, one eleven, and three fifteens. We're going to go round the bicone into the 11 O. And as I mentioned in the introduction, this is why it's quite important that you have two different colours of your seed beads. If that was a silver one in the middle, you'd have to count every single one. So it just get it would just get a bit frustrating and quite time consuming. Whereas you now you can see the gold, so you don't need to worry. Back to the next combination. One, two, three, eleven O, one, two, three. I'm gonna go round the bicone into the eleven O. And then we're going to finish our third section. So one, two, three, fifteens, one eleven, three fifteens. We're going to go round the bicone into the next eleven O. So that's our next three combinations done. So now we're at the point where we need to do our step up. So we know we need to exit from that middle 11 O, which where the needle is coming out of, all the way into that top corner by sewing through the 15 O's. And again, just give it a nice little pull. And at this point, you can already see that it's starting to form a little cup. So I give it a little helping hand. So I just use my fingers just to manipulate into a little cup, you can see, and the, the, you can see now that, the, that it's waiting for the bicones. Okay, you can see that little that little cup waiting. So we now know that we've just added our CB. So now we know it's a bicone round. So let's find some more greens. So one, two, three. So I'm going to take my first bicone, I'm going to jump from corner to corner. It's quite self-explanatory now because the, the seed beads have, have done their little, their little thing. Then our second, 
again corner to corner and then we'll do our next corner to corner and again I'm going to pull nice and tight so once you've well, once you've done your bicone round there isn't a step up there's only a step up when you do your seed bead round so if I turn it to the side now you can see we've already got the kiss and the cross okay so hence since it's got its name now I coined this technique the kiss cross when I first learned it it must be nine or ten years ago now with one of my very first instructional DVDs and it's actually called tubular beaded knitting which sounds so dull I thought we need to romanticize a little bit so and I, and I was, as I was netting, I thought, oh, it looks like a kiss. And I thought, and then it's a cross. So I, that's how the name Kiss Cross came about. But if you need to look for the demonstration anywhere else, it's tubular netting, which hasn't got the nice ring to it. So we're just going to continue. So we've just added our bicones. So now we know it's back to seed beads again. So one, two, three, fifteens, one eleven, and three fifteens. Round the bicone into the 11 -0. and then we're going to go 1 3 15s 1 11 3 15s round the bicone into the 11 -0. pull nice and tight and then we'll do our third so 1 2 3 15s 1 11 3 15s and then we're going to go round the bicone into the 11. And I'm going to get quite blasé now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go round into that 11 and I'm going to continue straight away through the three 15s exiting through our corner. So I'm going to go up through the 15s like so. And then through the 11. And you can already see automatically those seed bead sections are, are, are starting to raise up already. So they're already waiting. We're going to give them a little help so we're going to pull push all three pieces up so they make that little cup and we're going to fill the gap so let's find some more greens so one two and three so we're going to fill the gap corner to corner like so and then we're going to do another one green and green And then the green and as I said you don't do a step up when you do your bicones now I've gone for one static color but what I love doing sometimes is th this is the perfect example you, you have all these random colors and what I t sometimes do is I put them in a little bag and I take out one by one without looking and you get a, you get a multi-color and that, I call that the harlequin and I've done that quite a few times on the show with not just bicones but but six millimeter or four millimeter rounds as well so just have a little experiment depends what sort of look that you're after so what we're going to do next is we're going to do another round so three fifteens so one two three one eleven oh and then your three fifteens so we're going to go around the bicone into the next 11 three fifteens one two three then an 11 three fifteens round into the top and then the same three fifteens it's always that same combination it never changes and that's why i think i've fallen in love with this technique so much is it's just so methodical and you can put music on in the background or you can put TV on. It's very easy to follow and uh, that's lovely. And then through the 11 -0. See already, look, they're starting to bend up. As soon as you pull nice and tight, all the little three sections, they're already waiting. So do I have any more greens? Let's have a look. <gasps> I might have to change colour. Let's go for red. There we go. Let's go for red. Let's get festive. So again, exactly the same. So we're going to pick up one, so gold into gold, and then we're going to gold into gold, and then gold into gold, 
I first learned this technique probably, it must be nine or ten years ago now, and if I have a kit with seed beads or bike cones, I tend to make some sort of, of kiss cross. So I've probably done hours and hours and hours. So we've added our three bike cones. So we're then going to add our next round of our beading. So one, two, three, one, one, two, three. As I said, it never changes. And what's good about this technique is you can put it down and come back if you need to answer the door or have supper or something and, and come back and you know exactly where you are. So it's, it's really simple. One, two, three, round. And as I said, because we've gone to a four millimeter bicone, we, we call this micro kiss cross. Um, the smallest I've done is a three millimeter, which is even, even smaller. And I only used 15 O's. So I had two colors of 15 O's for that and it makes the most delicate, beautiful statement jewellery. And then obviously the largest I've done is an 8mm. I wouldn't go any bigger than an 8mm because it gets quite heavy after a while with all these beads and, and you use a lot of seed beads. Okay, so we're ready for our next... Oh, I'm geeing it up a bit now. I'm going to go for yellow because you can. Okay, so again, we've got our three open spaces. So jump the gap. Like so, and then jump the gap, and then jump the gap across. Okay, and we don't step up when we add bicones. Okay, so that's your your basic kiss cross. Now, for the sections that I made on the necklace and the earrings. I had nine rows. Now the nine rows, if I bring the earring across, sorry, seven, seven, two, four, six, oh, I've done it. Oh, look at that, look, how time flew. I thought I had, an, I thought I had another round to go and it's done, I think. So what you would do is you would start at one end and you would you'd go diagonally. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've done seven rows there. So if I go to the piece I've made, one, two, three, four, aha, slightly off, I've got six. So I need to do one more one more row. I thought it didn't seem long enough. So that's quite easy. So we just do another round. So we pick up one, two, three, then an 11, one, two, three. I'm going to go round the bicone. And we're going to do the same. That's thrown me out now having three different colors in rows like that. Never mind. What is this for demonstration? Yeah. So one, two, three, then an 11, and one, two, three. And then we'll do our last group. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So if you were doing this continuous, it would become what's known as a rope, a kiss cross rope. If you do little sections like I've made here, we call that a station. See, sometimes on the show, you'll hear me call it a kiss cross station necklace. So I will, when we come, I'll show you the necklace in a moment. So you would have a station and then a little combination of, of other gemstones and then another station. So it's either station or a rope. So I'm, I'm, this is going to be a station. And I'll show you how we incorporate our advent calendar finding. Okay, so that's, we're ready to go. So let's, let's go for blue, let's go for it. Okay, so you can imagine if we did go multicolored, it would just look absolutely incredible. So we're going to jump the gap. So corner to corner, and then corner to corner, and then corner to corner. Okay, so now we should have our nine. Let's have a look. So our seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Okay. So there are two different ways of finishing off your stations. If you want, as I've done on the necklace, on the earring here, to finish with your bicones, all you would do is you would take your needle and you would just thread through the bicone, through the 11, all the way around. Just keep, just keep circling and circling and circling. And there will be a point, probably after seven or eight moves, where the needle will no longer be able to fit through your seed bead. In which case you would then all you would do is you would cut your thread there's no need to tie it off 
you only need to, to surround a circle twice before it can't rewind and undo. Okay, so if, you, if you're not a fan of tying off, which I, I'm, I'm not a fan of tying off at all, um, but if, if, so if you don't want to tie off, you're simply going to go round and round and round until you can't get the needle through any further and then you would cut your thread, okay? But what we like to do sometimes is we like to finish our little sections, especially if it's a standalone piece, with a seed bead ending. So I'm going to show you that. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat our section. So one, two, three, eleven, oh, one, two, three. We're going to go all the way around. We're going to do the same. So one, two, three, one, eleven, oh, one, two, three. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm not the most patient of person and finishing it this way will add another 10 minutes to your jewelry design. Depends how you're wanting to finish or how much time you have. E each way is perfectly fine. They look as nice. Okay, so that's your three. We're going to go into the 11.0 and we're going to step up to the outer edge, like so. And then what we're going to do is all we're going to do is we're going to take those three sections up and instead of adding a bicone in between, all we're going to do is we're going to jump the gap without a bead. So jump to jump. Don't pull too tight yet. Jump to jump. So this is exactly what you've been doing, but without a bicone. And then jump to jump. Like so. And then we pull tight. Can you see we've got a nice, neat triangular finish? To the, it looks like quite serpent-like, doesn't it, at the end? Okay, and then what we would do, you can you see now we've got the three gold 11 O's in the center. So as we, as we would do if we're finishing with bicones, is we would just sew round and round and round. But obviously if you were going to do a tubular necklace, then you would just keep going with the technique that I showed you, but I wanted to show you two different ways of ending. So just going to go all the way around, maybe a couple of times, because what we're going to do is down the center, you can just, right in the center of those three 11 O's, I'm gonna take my needle, is it going to be long enough? Yes. We're gonna take our needle and we're just going to go down through the center and back up through the middle of our beginning of our little section we made. And we're going to do exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna cut off that tail so it doesn't get in the way of me showing you. And we're going to come up through, we're coming up through the center Okay, then what we're going to do, I'm just going to sew that through, is we're going to repeat what we've just done with our new piece of thread that we've fed all the way through. So we're going to go through the 11, and we're going to pick up exactly the same combination. So one, two, three, 11, one, two, three. We're going to go around to the gold the 11 0 and we're going to go around to the next one so it's exactly the same combination as the whole technique I always say to, when I'm on the show that I can teach you how to do the kiss cross in five minutes and I think I've shown you that on this the thing is though it's incredibly addictive I think it's one of the most most simple techniques that produces some of the most beautiful jewelry Okay, and then all we're going to do is we're going to go through one of the 11 O's. So we've stepped up. We're not going to add a bicone because all we're going to do is just go corner to corner, corner to corner, corner to corner, like so, pull nice and tight. And then we're just going to continue. So we're just going to go round and round until, as I said, you can't get your needle through anymore. So we'll just keep going. Go through and through. I'm 
always a bit wary when I'm tying off. I've done it, I've done it probably thousands of times, but there's always that time that the knot you cut them too close to the knot, or you don't do it properly. So this is a fail-safe way. You just keep going round. It might take a bit longer, but it's better that than having a snappage in your work. So I'm just going to go round all the way round. all the way through. I think that will do. And then we can go in and we can cut off all of our threads. Okay, so if I just show that. So now we've got our nine, our seven, I keep saying nine, our seven groups of our, our seven rows and then we've got those nice, neat, capped endings. As I said, you don't have to do that. You can, as I've done in the earrings here. I've just left it with the bicone. It's entirely up to you, whichever way you think you prefer to look. But as I said, if you were just if you were doing a rope, you would just continue with that same technique over and over and over again. Now you might need to add thread to your your piece of work. But if you go back, not to my last um, tutorial, but the one before that, I actually show you how to add on thread and how to tie off so that that's all covered on a on a previous technique as well so if you wanted to make the earring all you would do is you would take a head pin or a piece of wire and you did as i've done here i've used again the same color bicone with a pearl so i've taken a head pin i've placed these little sections on and can you see we've got our bicone and then a seed bead if you put the bicone exactly inside that gap, now bicone has it's got eight sides around the base. So if you pop your bicone with three of your bicones in your kiss cross, it would be lopsided. It would okay. If it had four bicones here, it would sit in perfectly. And I don't like th to see the lopsided. You've taken all the trouble making the piece. You don't want the finish to be, look a bit amateurish. But if you add a seed bead, a color. So I'm using the 11O exactly the same into that that 11 sits into the gap between the three bicones perfectly and as you can see that is absolutely rigid and it sits nice and straight so then the head pin will be going through your earring your earring section and then all you do then is you just repeat so i've done exactly the same it's a mirror image either side and then i've popped on a shepherd's hook okay so that would be how you'd make your earrings so you could, if you wanted to, do it with the bicones finishing or the little netting. Now, because we've just done that extra little bit of netting either end, it elongates your section as well. So if you find that you don't have a head pin long enough to go through with the embellishments, what you could use is a piece of 0.6 wire. So if you look carefully, can you see, is what I've done here. I've taken a piece of 0.6 and using my flat nose pliers, I flattened the end to stop the seed bead from falling off. So in effect, the seed bead acts as a stopper with the wire head there. And then you can have you can you can have a 10 inch earring if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, to go for it. And then you can do a wrap loop at the end here. So if your if your kiss cross section is too long for a head pin, don't fret, you can use 0.6 millimeter wire as well. So all I've done is I've flattened using my flat nose pliers. I've cut it using my flush cutters and then using a nail file or an emery board, just, just um, file off the edge so it's not sharp. So that's, that's nice and smooth because you don't want a sharp piece of metal banging against your neck if you're wearing the long earrings. So that's how you do the earrings. But we're here to, there we go, we're here to show off this amazing bale that you've got as part of your advent calendar. So as you can see, there we go, so as you can see, it's absolutely set, ready to go, perfect. So what we need to do now is we need to start making our necklace. Okay, so we'll stick with it. We'll stick with these these amazing colours. So for this, I'm going to take. I've got enough bicones there. I'm going to take another piece of thread, and again, keep your little cover on. Keep your little plastic cover on your reel, and you want a piece of thread as long as your necklace plus I would say six inches either side. We're going to knot our necklace, our thread, sorry, so I've threaded my needle, you saw how easy that was. And then at one end, I'm going to take, 
let's take one of the 11 O's as a stopper. Okay, so I'm going to slide that down and you want to leave enough thread to attach your clasp of choice to. Okay, so I'm just going to slide that down. Okay, and what I did, first of all, was I took my needle and I'm going to, I'm going to sew one side of the necklace and then do the other side. And as you can, know, you can see, there's a little gap in between that section there. And I think it will take a bicone. It will take a bicone perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on, let's pop on an 11, a bicone, an 11. I'm going to go up through the first half of the bale. Then I'm going to pop on a bicone. I've really mixed the colors up now, look. And then I'm going to sew back through. And hopefully the bicone should sit in the center of the bale perfectly. Let's have a look, am I happy with that? I think so, I think that sits nicely in there. Let's just pull that tail through. There we go. Okay, am I happy with that? I'm not actually 100% happy with how that's sitting. So, change of plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew back through take off my bicone. See, this is all part of the planning, you see, to make sure it's all planned. So what I'm going to do, is so I'm going to place a bicone before the bale. I've got a little gap in the center there, so I'm going to fill that gap. Let's go for a 15, an 11, and a 15. Check the gap, that works better. Place that through. Now obviously you don't want those beads to come out of the bale, we want those to sit inside. So I'm going to grab another, I have to go for one the same colour, so I'll go for another bicone. And then hopefully if I pull that through, we should have, there we go, look at that, perfect. So we've got a bicone either side of our bale, so the bale sits beautifully. We've got a bicone either side acting as our little stoppers, and then we can start on our necklace. So can you notice this is the stopper bead here? So all we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to do this side of the necklace and then we're just going to pull that through, take off our stopper bead and then sew the other side of the necklace. So just do it in, in two halves, okay? So let's start. So what I've also, I'm going to incorporate in the necklace are these amazing cultured pearls. And I thought as I've got this incredible nucleated pearl as my, on to my, my peg bell here, it warrants cultured rather than shell pearl. So we're just going to cut those off. Put those to one side. So we need to come up with a combination now for our necklace. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave my little kiss cross section a moment and I'm just going to do something nice here. So I'm going to use an 11O, then a 15, then an 11O, and then a pearl. I'm gonna slide that down, that's perfect. And then I'm going to repeat this little section here. So it's always about repetition and symmetry. So 11, 15, and an 11. I'm gonna pop on another, let's put on a bicone. Let's go for, let's go for these Coca-Cola browns. So I'm gonna slide that down like so. And then I'm gonna repeat that little section. It's entirely up to you how you want to lay out your, your beads. And then we're going to go for pearl, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our kiss cross section. So if we've got seed beads in between a statement bead, we always end with a, with a section of seed beads before we then add our kiss cross station. So I'm gonna slide those down. We're going to take our needle and we've still got enough space through. Now if you find that your kiss cross station is too long for your necklace, you can use what's called a big eye needle which come in various sizes. I think the largest big eye needle is six inches long. So if ever you see big eye needles on the show, snaffle them just for your, your kiss cross sections. But I think we're going to be all right. I'm going to offer the needle up. Yeah, there's plenty of room. So I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to thread it through and you want the needle to come back up through the middle of your group of three 11 O's. So if it doesn't come up first straight, first straight away, just give it a little 
wiggle. That's gone off kilter. There we go. So you can see that's come up through exactly through the center of those three. Just take your time on this bit because if it comes out at an angle or it comes outside that little group of three, it won't sit right when you come to do your completed necklace. So always make sure, just spend that little extra time making sure you come up through the center. So then we'll place that down and you can see now that sits absolutely perfectly. We've got our netting ending, but as I said, you don't have to have the netting ending, but as I mentioned earlier, just remember that the, first, the last bead to go into your section has to be a C bead, otherwise the bicone will sit at a jaunty angle. Okay, just a little, a little tip. And then what I would do then is just continue with the same technique. So we're going to go an 11, a 15 and 11. Just go back on yourself. So the first bead was a, was a culture pearl. Okay, and then we're going to repeat. So we've got an 11, a 15 and an 11, and then we can go for a bicone. So let's stick with that colorway that we went for. Like so, and then we'll repeat. So we're just gonna continue with your necklace. Now for my completed necklace, I had six of these little stations all together. You can just have one either side if you wanted to. So let's go for another pearl. Like so, so that's our pearl. And then let's end with an 11, a 15 and an 11. So what's good about these little stations is you can make a piece of jewelry and then you can wear it to an event and then you can dismantle it if you wanted to and then use it in something else, turn it into a memory wire bangle or something like that. So treat, treat them as a little beaded bead, they're, 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 they're so cool. So imagine that you've used up your stations on one side. We're going to pop on our clasp. Now I showed you how to pop on the clasp on our last demonstration, but I'll show you again. So if you go onto our YouTube channel, all of our guest designer little tutorials are all on there. Okay, so when you put the first half of your clasp on, it's really easy. You just take the end of your thread, thread it through the loop. Now these are really good, these toggles, because they're closed loops. So there's no fear of your thread coming out. So I've attached it with a single knot, and then I've done a double knot, and then I do another double knot. Okay, so that's nicely attached. Don't cut the tail off, it's really important. And I'll show you why when we come to the end. And then what you would do, you see, is you would just take your thread, you'd pull it through. So that'd be one side of your necklace. Okay, so that's now attached nice and neatly. And then what we would do then is we would go back to this end. We would take our slide, our stopper bead off. And then we would attach our needle again. So you see straight away, so if you ever see tulip needles, grab them. They are amazing. Okay, so we're just going to continue. Let's just do a bit of video. I'm not going to take it. I am going to take notice of that, but it's thrown me a bit there because we've got two next to each other. So all I'm going to do is reverse. So take my needle back through the 11 and the bicone. You see, I can't, I can't go ad hoc. It's, it throws me every time. I have to be perfectly symmetrical. I'm not asymmetric at all. Okay, so we've got an 11, 15 and 11. Following out, we've got a pearl, so I'm going to pop a pearl on. Stick with the same combination, 11, 15, and 11. And going along, and we had the brown bicone. Have I got, have got one, that's good. I had to thank all you at home for allowing me to use Swarovski as a treat. As I said, we don't get to do it on the show anymore, so it's, it's amazing. But hopefully you've all got them in your stash and the, the kiss cross is the perfect technique to use this on. Then we got our pearl. And then we can go 11, 15, and 11. This is where you would then add your little kiss cross station. Let me just pull my mat across. This is where you'd add your kiss cross station. But what we're going to do is we're going to take off our thread we're just going to cut it to a manageable length. And then we're going to pop on the second half of our clasp. So 
I've got my So what we're going to do is we're going to again attach our ogle, our second half of our clasp, tie one knot and then slide that down. Once you've done a double knot, you won't be able to slide it, so just bear that in mind. So slide so one single knot, then you're able to slide your thread down. And then this end, slightly different, you take your thread and you go behind the loop and up through pull so you have a loop in your thread about the size of a grape and you can either go down but I come from the back up so I go up through once up through twice pull thread nice and tight and then I repeat that one more time so back to front up through the loop once up through the loop twice pull that nice and tight okay so now we've got our sort of necklace as you can get the gist and then we take our needle and we take our first end of our thread and we thread on our needle again the first time and then we're just going to what we're going to do is go back down through i tend to go back through about an inch of work so back through the beads back through the pearl so if you cut next to your knot, there's quite a possibility that your knot will come undone. If you sew away from it and then you cut your thread, it's a lot safer. Well, you could, you could use French wire. If you have French wire or a wire garden, you can do that as well. You don't have to use them just with pearls. So I've taken my thread all the way back through. Now it's safe to cut. So cut off my working thread. And then I'm gonna repeat that the same the other end. So my existing piece of thread through the needle, look at that, clean sweep, every single time, first time. Have a practice with the tulip needles because they're, they're great fun and you get a massive deal of satisfaction threading your needle first time, it's ace. So again, I'm going back down through, pulling nice and tight, and then that's safe just to cut through our thread. Okay, so that's nice and secure. You've got your kiss cross stations. What I'm gonna go now is I'm bringing down the necklace onto my mat and I can talk you through what I did. So this is the completed necklace. So this is your amazing bale that you had with your calendar. There's my amazing pearl. So if I bring my little piece across, you can see how beautiful that fits. And I've got, as I said, I've got the bicone either side of the bale, just to give some symmetry. And then as you, as you saw with my piece here, I've taken the thread one side up through the combination I've gone through one of the kiss cross stations. This is without the netted ends, but you can net the ends as well, because I've shown you both ways now. Then I've done a combination of pearl and your bicones and your seed beads. Then you've got another station. And you come all the way up, got another station. And what I've done is I've gone all the way around. So this is a 360. This is without, I didn't use a, a, uh, a toggle or a clasp on here. This is 360, so that saves your findings. I've gone all the way down, back through, and then I've tied off either ends as you've seen as well. So even though it's quite a large necklace, it's very, very lightweight. I think there's more weight in the pearl and the bale than the rest of the necklace put together, actually. It's, it's, it's really lovely. So as you can see, we've got our earrings and then we've got our necklace as well. That's a really nice little suite. And once you get the hang of this, this kiss cross, you could probably make one of those little stations. So that's a seven row station in about a quarter of an hour. So you can build them up quite quickly. So what I would definitely recommend is making lots of your stations, put them to one side and deal with it and deal with, and deal with them later if you want to make a piece of jewellery or just continue and continue and make a full kiss cross rope. So as I said, for those of you who find using 15 O's slightly difficult, go up a size so you'd use 11s as your netting and your eight as your kiss. Um, but if you're happy with the micro kiss cross, you can use the, the 15s and your 11s with a six millimeter bicone or a six millimeter round for something more daintier. But I think I just think that your micro using your four millimeter bicone with your 11s and 15s is absolutely perfect fit. Jump up to a six mil bicone, go for your 11s and your 8s, and ju just have a real play. It's, it's as I said, it's one of the most beautiful techniques. And as you can see, I can, I've taught you how to do kiss cross in five minutes. Whether you want to go large or you want to do a rope or you want to do bicones or, or whether you want to do little stations or earrings, it's entirely up to you. It's an absolutely wonderful technique. 
and I just hope that my enthusiasm for it has come across on screen today. It's my, it's my number one favourite technique ever, and I've done DVDs on it as well, it's just ingenious. So look back at not my last demo, which was on the wire macrame, the one before that. As I said, they're all listed on YouTube, and we show you how to finish off and how to add thread, because if you decide to make a 360 rope, you'll probably need to add more thread three or four times. So we show you how to do that in a previous DVD. And as I said, so far, all of the guest designers tutorials for 19 days worth uh, are all on YouTube. Um, tomorrow you're in for a treat. I believe you've got the amazing Linda, who's going to be doing an Alhambra style necklace. And um, I'm back, I'm very, very privileged to be back on Christmas Eve, which is the finale of our advent calendar. And I'm not going to tell you what, what it is, but I'm going to show you from start to finish how to make the most beautiful floral necklace. So seed beads at the ready again. So once again, thank you all for joining me, not, just not me today, but everyone else on all of the past dates that we've had in the calendar. It's been an absolute joy and we've loved to show you some of the creations we've come up with. So I'm not back on the show now until Christmas Eve, followed by the last of our tutorials from the Advent calendar. So have a wonderful afternoon and I look very much just looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Hey jewelry makers, uh, it's me Claire. I just want to tell you about um, the show on Friday. Uh, so it's my last show before I finish for a little bit for Christmas. Um, and I've got some amazing kits. So uh, my nine o'clock is uh, Memory Wire, which I haven't worked with for so long, so that's gonna be really lovely. And actually uh, you can get some uh, the Memory Wire cutters, which I haven't seen those for a long time as well. So that's great, so that's at nine o'clock. Uh, and then at 12, I've actually got, oh my gosh, they are so beautiful. I hope you can see them. They are spinner rings. So that's at 12. And so some of them are, some of them have got gemstones and some of them are like this beautiful, gorgeous heart. They're absolutely lovely, really, really beautiful. And the gemstones are uh, amazing with those. So that's my 12 o'clock. So yeah, so um, I really hope you can join me. It's me and Al. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you then, joy makers. Bye. Christmas Day when I'll be joining you with Carol and the team for a wonderful Christmas show. We've got the launch of the Trilogy Collection which is absolutely amazing and we also have a beautiful pearl kit. So much in the show, hope you can join us. See you soon. Hey jewelry makers. Uh, it's me, Claire. I just want to tell you about um, the show on Friday. Uh, so it's my last show. So I've been working with jewellery now for over 15 years. Um, love genuine gemstones, but I'm fascinated by precious metals. And um, a lot of the big designers out there use triple metals. They'll use rose gold with sterling silver. They'll use yellow gold and rose gold together. And I love the mix of all of it. And it got me thinking about the use of precious metals together, silver, rose gold, yellow gold. And I kind of thought it's, it's a bit like the beginning, the middle and the end. Something which can be appealing to uh, someone who's a, a teenager, someone who's in their 20s, 30s, 40s, right the way up to however old you are. And I really wanted a collection that wasn't just for a 20 year old or just for a 40 year old. I wanted a collection that would be totally um, uh, transgenerational for absolutely everybody out there and something which hopefully you can all enjoy together. It's something which absolutely everybody can associate with and everybody can enjoy. Mm -hmm.